Okay, we are almost done, guys. So the last little bit that we cover in chapter two is about absolute values. So when I take the absolute value of a number, it's always positive because the absolute value represents that number's distance from zero. So if I took the absolute value of negative two, it's two units to the left of zero. If I take the absolute value of positive two, it's still two because it's two units away from zero. So if you're unsure, ask yourself, am I positive? Positive. Absolute values are always positive, okay? Because it's a distance. So if I just knew that the absolute value came out to be a number, like in this case seven, I actually have two options. So as soon as you see these two absolute value bars, I always think to yourself, two. There's going to be two answers, two restrictions, always two. So if I knew that the answer of the absolute value was seven, well, obviously it could have been seven. But the sneakier one is that it might have been a negative seven because the absolute value of negative seven is seven. So both the absolute value of seven and the absolute value of negative seven have the answer of seven. Now when we have the intervals, the inequalities, we have two restrictions. So if I told you that I took its absolute value and got a value smaller than five, well, of course it could have been numbers like four, three, two, and one. It could have even been 4.26892, okay? But I'd have to stop because if I went way back over here to negative seven, we just said that the absolute value of negative seven was seven. Seven is not less than five. So I had to cut this back off at negative five. Their absolute values stopped being less than five right here, two restrictions. Same if it goes the other way. If I told you I took the absolute value and got an answer larger than four, well, of course it could have been five, six, seven, eight, 2009, anything over here. But what's sneaky is that it could have been these as well. So like if I checked the number negative two, the absolute value of negative two is not greater than four. But if I went a little bit further over and checked that negative seven again, just like we said, the absolute value of negative seven was seven, and seven is indeed greater than four. So I had to pick things back up again. So all of the numbers bigger than four and all the numbers less than negative four have an absolute value greater than four always two, two answers, two restrictions, two inequalities, okay? So this just kind of breaks all that down for us. So in this problem right here, oh, hang on, this was one more of the irregulars without absolute values. If I wanted to solve this just like I did the red one right above, I would of course isolate the variable by adding and subtracting first it seems like it's going to be scary because we've got a fraction, but don't panic. We got this. There we go. So in this last step, when I divide, I just have to remember to use my parentheses. Now, even though it's a big, messy, scary fraction, it is positive, so there's no crocodile flipping. So I just have negative 8 divided by 1 half. If you remember that you're really multiplying by the reciprocal, it should make sense that we get a negative 16. And then over here, we get a negative 8. So this one has the restrictions between a negative 16 and a negative 8. I would use round parentheses on both, which means my interval notation would look like this. The minimum and the maximum. Okay, now let's move on into those absolute values. Sorry, I gave you a sneak preview. Okay, so if I knew that I took the absolute value of a number and then added five and got 13, what were my two, always two options of the number? Well, first I have this loose five over here. He's not in the absolute value. So let's get him out of the way. Well, that tells me that the absolute value of that number must have been equal to eight. So two, always two. That means my number might have been eight, of course, but he also might have been a negative eight because the absolute value of negative eight is eight plus five is 13. Now be careful, it's not always just plus and minus the answer. Keep watching. 
Now this one again, I've got my loose five. Take it over just like the last one in red. That tells me that the absolute value of this number was equal to negative two. But we just said the absolute value should always be positive. If I took the absolute value of two, I'd get a two. If I took the absolute value of negative two, I'd get a two. There is absolutely no number I could take an absolute value and get a negative because the absolute values are positive. So this one is actually a no solution. You can never ever take an absolute value and make it magically turn into a negative. No solution, because both of these don't work. <clears throat> All right, now like I said, we can't just plus or minus the answer because this one right here has the absolute value of stuff. Now remember way back in chapter one when we talked about order of operations, I said that the grouping might have been an absolute value. This would be that case. So if I knew the mystery number X, I would need to multiply by three and then add the one and then take the absolute value. I would need to clean all this up and then take the absolute value after I found that number. Now, of course, I don't know X, so I can't do that. So I have to work my way backwards. So that means right here, all of this stuff was equal to four. So just like you'd expect, three X plus one might equal four, but here's the sneaky one. 3x plus 1 might have been equal to a negative 4 whose absolute value was then 4. Here's the plus or minus. The stuff was equal to plus or minus. So notice I did not change the stuff. 3x plus 1, 3x plus 1, 3x plus 1. It might have been equal to a negative 4 because the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. Now, it might seem weird, but stick with me. Let's solve this out and it's gonna make sense. So if I solve my little algebra problems, just like always. This one gives me an answer of one. Now it seems like the other answer should be a negative one. So let's kind of put this down here. We'll test it out. Question mark. Now this one over here, ends up being the messy fraction, negative five thirds. I don't like that answer. I don't wanna use it, but I have to because it works. So remember that these are the only numbers that would make this work out. So if I took the absolute value of three times one plus one, then I would get three times one is three, three plus one is four. It works out. So it seems like the other answer should have been a negative one, but let's try it. Three times a negative one plus one would be a negative three plus one, which would be a negative two, not four. It doesn't work. So that's why this one, while it seems like it should have worked, is not one of the solutions. But this right here, while it seems like such a weird, messy fraction, let's test it out. Three times negative five thirds. Oh, look at that, those threes are gonna cancel. I'm seeing some optimistic stuff going on. That gives me minus five plus one. Oh, sure enough, there's that negative four whose absolute value is four. It works out. Okay, so these are my two answers, completely different numbers, not just plus or minus. I had to work it out. Okay, let's try it again. So here's my absolute value of stuff. That means my stuff might have been equal to eight, obviously, but the sneakier one, the stuff might have been equal to a negative eight. Here's the plus or minus. Never change the stuff. A lot of people want to do this. It's tempting, you're saying, oh, I'm taking the absolute value of four. But remember, the order of operations said that I had to evaluate this before I took the absolute value. It's not the absolute value of this and the absolute value of that. It's the absolute value of the whole thing. So here's the plus or minus. The stuff is equal to plus or the stuff is equal to minus. And now I solve, just like always, just two little bitty algebra problems. So 4x equals 12 divided by 4 would make an x of 3. So 
So remember, that doesn't mean the other answer is negative 3. we got to work it out. That's going to give me a negative 4. So when I divide, I get an answer of negative 1. Okay, completely different numbers. Now this one right here, I have the absolute value of stuff equals negative 7. Wait a minute. We can't do that. We can't take an absolute value and get a negative. So here's another no solution right away. No work involved. You can never make an absolute value equal a negative. Okay, last one. We've got some big numbers, but we got this. Here's my stuff. Stuff is either equal to 700. Doesn't matter if it's left or right. It's the same stuff. Or my stuff is equal to negative 700. I'm about to run out of room. Let's see if I can squeeze it in. Notice it never changes the stuff. Still a negative right here. Plus or minus is right here. Okay, here's my two separate equations. Okay. So now I'm going to solve. That gives me 800 equals 100A. Divide by the 100 to get one answer of 8. Now remember, it's not just plus or minus 8. Don't try to skip ahead. When I start solving the other one, I get a completely different answer. Got a negative 600. And then when I divide by that 100, my other answer is not negative 8. It's negative 6. Two slides. We're almost there. OK. Now this one, same story, except I've got some stuff and I've got a loose number, just like the very first one. So this one, when I had that loose five, I moved him out of the way. So this one, my stuff is all stuck together. It's trapped. I can't pull it apart. But this two is loose, so I'm going to pull him out. Okay, I'm going to clean this up and get him out of the way. That means my absolute value of stuff is equal to eight. Now I'm going to break it into two, always two. Two answers, two restrictions, two equations. 2t minus 6 is either equal to 8 or 2t minus 6 is equal to negative 8. Stuff is always stuff. Never change your stuff. 2t minus 6 both times. Then I go solve just like regular. Notice when you're solving, it's the same steps. If your steps are different, you probably accidentally changed your stuff. The only thing that's different is the numbers. Last step, I divide everybody by 2 to get my final answers of 7 and negative 1. Completely different numbers. Okay, here's another one with that loose one. Let's get him out of the way. Okay, this is all trapped. This is my stuff. The absolute value of stuff equals 2. Okay, so remember the step to take away the absolute value bars was to break it into those two cases. Stuff equals 2 or stuff equals negative 2. Okay, I put this one here because it has a really common mistake, a little sneaky thing. Right here, when you get to solving, minusing the 2 and all four of them, I have the 2t. Oh, wait, it canceled over there. Remember, I need it equal to something. So here's that special case where it's equal to the number 0. Okay, so it was technically always a 0, but we didn't write it because we didn't need it. 2t plus 0 was just 2t. And then this last step, it's not undefined. Zero on top is fine. Zero on top is zero. One of the numbers that would make this work is zero. Two times zero is zero, plus two is two, two plus one is three. 
Okay, on this one, here's another common mistake. It seems like those should cancel, but remember, if you owe $2 and borrow another two, you're not free and clear. Now you owe $4. So I divide it by two for my other answer of negative two. Okay, so the last little thing, the last two, always two, are those restrictions, just like we talked about. So the numbers that are less than or equal to five would be like four, 3.879, all of the numbers less than or equal to five. So five is included. But down here, I would have to stop again. The absolute value of negative seven is seven. Seven is not less than or equal to five. So I had to stop right here, put another closed dot on the negative five. Okay, so the numbers between and including negative five and five have an absolute value that is less than or equal to five. I could also write it in my inequality notation like this. Okay, now it seems like this one's gonna break that rule, right? Because it's equal to a negative, but look, he's got a loose number. So the first thing I need to get those loose numbers moved over so I really have that the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to six. Okay, so that means starting at the six, I've got a closed dot again because it has the bar and going up, my x's would be greater than or equal to six. But here's the sneakier one. Remember, all of these also have an absolute value greater than six. So starting back up again at the negative six, going all the way down to negative infinity. So my x's are either greater than or equal to six or less than or equal to negative six. In my in interval notation, I would say from negative infinity to the negative six square bracket to the six to positive infinity. Now this right here that I put between them is the letter U. It's kind of a fancy U for union. It's basically just a math and E symbol to say here or there. If you write it in inequality notation on X, Y, Z, just put the, the word OR. So always watch for which one it wants. If it wanted inequality, you'd put OR. If it wanted interval, you'd use the union U, which you would just punch the U on your keyboard and it knows what you want. Okay. So notice that second restriction came from this. Here's my one that it looked like, x is greater than six, x is greater than six. But the other one, the sneaky one was flipped and negative. The other one was x was less than a negative six. The same thing happened up here. I said that the x's were less than five. That was the obvious one, x less than five. But the sneaky one is that they were also flipped greater than the negative five. So I need to flip and negative. So let's try it on a bigger problem. Last two, we got this. So this one, I've got some stuff. So my stuff, x minus six is less than three, or just less than, which means either the stuff is less than three, just like you would expect, or the sneakier one that maybe that stuff was greater than a negative three. So this stuff was both less than three and greater than a negative three. Okay, two statements, two comparisons, two answers, two restrictions. So if it was less than the three, and greater than the negative three, by adding six to all three of these, that shifts the whole thing up to being between three and nine. The numbers between three and nine minus six would stay less than three. Okay, so there's the one just like it looks like. And then there's the one that has the flip and the negative. Okay, you could either write it as two separate statements.
and then combine them because to be less than nine and greater than three is one single area, or you could write it in one single statement like this. Now this one, it's got the loose number. We always wanna take care of that loose number first. So it's really that 2x minus four is greater than six minus four is two. That means that 2x minus four is just like you'd expect, greater than two, or the sneakier one, 2x minus four. Notice I never change the stuff, it's always the same, 2x minus four is flipped less than a negative two. Flip and negative. Now I solved them. Just like before, they have those same steps. If your steps are different, you probably accidentally changed your stuff. Last step, divide. See that the x's would need to stay smaller than one or the x's would need to stay larger than three. So this is two separate areas. Larger than three goes this way. Smaller than one goes this way. You might say, oh, it's everything except two. But remember, there's infinitely many decimals in there too. Okay, so you can have 2.26834 is also missing. Okay, so one last thing. This answer up here in interval notation and this answer down here in interval notation would look like this with the two separate pieces. Okay, so I hope you watch this video in stages because this would be way too much information to take in all at once. That is all of chapter two. As always, let me know anytime you have questions, if you need clarification on those crocodiles. I know this last stuff's a little sneaky, so please ask me questions.